This is the 5 minute guide to the Richelieu class battleships of the French Navy. The Richelieu class remains the largest French built warship of any kind, with an even greater displacement than the modern nuclear powered aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. In the 1930s, the German building of the Deutschland class had resulted in the French building the two Dunkirk class in response. Shortly thereafter, the Italians started building the Littorio class battleships, and the Germans started on the Scharnhorsts, which prompted a French response. This was to be the Richelieus. The French had done extensive work on quadruple turrets for two cancelled classes of battleships during the First World War, the Normandy and Lyon classes. Because of the risk that with so many guns in a single turret, a ship might lose a substantial portion of its main armament to a single hit, each turret was divided in two down the middle, so they were effectively a pair of twin turrets in very close formation. In the 1920s, the British had built the Nelson class, which concentrated the main battery forward of the superstructure, and therefore shortened the length of the ship's vulnerable citadel, which allowed for a thicker main belt for the same weight as compared to a more conventional design. The French had combined these two concepts on the Dunkirk class, and would now enlarge these principles on the Richelieus. As a result, the ships were armed with eight 15-inch guns in a pair of quadruple turrets located forward of the bridge in superfiring positions. The secondary battery consisted of nine 6.1-inch guns in three triple turrets located in a horizontal superfiring line at the rear of the superstructure. The initial anti-aircraft armament consisted of 12 100mm guns in six twin mounts, although these guns had a limited anti-surface role as well. 16 37mm cannon in twin mounts and 28 13.2mm heavy machine guns in a variety of mountings completed this anti-aircraft armament. This was actually a relatively heavy anti-aircraft armament for a ship of the time. The ships were fast, capable of 30 knots, and protected by 13 inches of sloped belt armour and a 6 inch deck, with a backup 1.6 inch deck lower down to catch any splinters. A pair of ships were ordered, the Richelieu and the Jean Bar. But in the late 1930s, Italy had ordered a couple more Littorio class battleships, so the French ordered a pair of additional battleships as well. That old French urge to tinker came back again, and the ships were ordered to two entirely different revised designs. The Clemenceau had a revised secondary battery of two triple turrets super firing at the rear and one on each side for a total of four, three of which could bear at a broadside target. Six additional 100mm guns were also called for and all 100mm guns were to be in turrets as opposed to shielded mounts. The Gascon was an even more radical change. This moved the second turret to a more conventional rear-mounted position, so the ship would have a single quadruple mount at each end. The secondary battery would revert to three triple turrets, now all on the centre line so that the overall broadside was not compromised. The sides of the superstructure would therefore be free for an extensive continuous battery of 100mm dual-purpose guns. As it turned out, neither of these ships was completed, although the incomplete hull of Clemenceau was towed out of its dock and sunk later in the war. Which is really something of a pity. The wartime careers of the completed ships were radically different. The Richelieu barely made it out to sea trials before the German invasion of France was almost complete. She eventually managed to reach the port of Dakar in Senegal, which is in West Africa. Due to the incomplete nature of her anti-aircraft battery, her firepower in this department was weak, and when she came under attack by the British after the French surrender to Germany, she was unable to defend herself effectively and was actually sunk in harbour by swordfish torpedo bombers. However, due to the shallow depth of her mooring, she was refloated and moved to the inner harbour. A follow-up attack by the British and Free French forces was inconclusive, and still under Vichy French control, the Richelieu and Shore batteries engaged HMS Barham and HMS Resolution. But despite a few non-damaging hits on both sides, and hundreds of near misses much to the consternation of the local fish population, the most damage was caused by an explosion in the ship's own guns, disabling the second turret. After a Vichy French submarine scored a hit on HMS Resolution, the Allied forces withdrew. The anti-aircraft battery was then augmented by some more guns stolen from various other ships in the harbour. After the Allied landings in North Africa in 1942, the French forces in Africa joined the Allies and the ship was sent to the United States for refits and repairs. The entire anti-aircraft battery was replaced, except for the 100mm guns. 48 single 20mm and 14 quadruple 40mm mounts were installed, along with some basic radar and minor superstructure changes. 
She was then sent to join the British Home Fleet until March 1944, when she was transferred to the Pacific, where she would spend most of the rest of the war attacking Japanese positions along with the British Pacific Fleet. She would round out the war in September 1945 by hitting a magnetic mine. After the war, she took French troops back to Indochina before taking part in various training operations, then being placed in reserve in 1958 and scrapped in 1968. By contrast, her sister, Jean Barre, was only three quarters complete when she was almost captured by German panzer divisions. A hastily dug channel got her out of dock, but with the sole armament of a single main battery turret, she ended up in Casablanca under Vichy French control and ended up engaging the USS Massachusetts, taking far more damage than she inflicted. Then, after repairs, open fire on the American ships again, this time being sunk in harbour by aircraft from the USS Ranger. After the French forces in the area switched sides, various proposals to repair and refit her were discussed. Everything from a hybrid battleship aircraft carrier, to a full carrier conversion, to stealing the battleship Lorraine's 13.4 inch guns. None of this came to pass, and she was eventually brought back into service with her original main armament and a much stronger anti-aircraft battery, along with an improved speed of 32 knots. In this guise, she served in various ceremonial duties and in the Suez Crisis, but was always undermanned and was put in reserve in 1957, before finally being scrapped in 1970. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below.